can you actually make enough money reselling part-time to make it worth all of the effort that it is to be a part-time reseller. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you everything that sold for me in the month of March as a part-time reseller. I have a full-time job as a high school choir teacher, but in like the eight to 10 hours a week that I spend reselling, I am able to make, I think, a decent amount of money. So in today's video, we're gonna look at everything that sold in the month of March, talk about all my numbers, stay tuned. Hi everyone, my name is Becky Park. I am a part time reseller, which means I have a full-time job. This is not what I do full-time like many other reselling YouTubers on YouTube. Instead, I have a full-time job as a high school choir teacher. It keeps me very busy, as do my two children. We are always at gymnastics meets and at practice and church and just doing all these different things. And so I have roughly an average of eight to 10 hours to devote to my reselling business a week, I would say. And at this point in my reselling journey, I do think that I'm pretty quick when it comes to things like, you know, photographs, listing, looking up comps, all that kind of stuff. Because at this point, a lot of it is muscle memory. Even when it comes to listing and cross-listing, like I kind of just mindlessly like know where to go and what to do because I've done it hundreds upon thousands of times. Like I have over a thousand active listings on my different platforms and I've sold thousands of pieces over the past seven years. And so this is something that I've been doing for a while. I'm pretty fast at it. And so if you're watching and you're a little bit newer to reselling, you might be thinking to yourself, well, I don't think I'm ever going to get to a place where I have over a thousand listings. And that's okay. That's the beautiful thing about reselling is it's not a one size fits all business model. Your reselling business can look the way that you want it to. If you don't have a lot of space, you can have 150 to 200 active listings in your closet and be very successful. I'm more of a volume seller. I like to have a lot of things listed. I like to get more things moving in and out of my stores. That's just how I like to do it. So some of you might be watching and hear about my numbers and think to yourselves, oh my gosh, like I just don't think I'm ever going to get there. Or some of you might be like, oh my she barely makes any money. But this is just an honest recap of what the month of March looked like for me. And it can kind of give you an idea of if you feel like, you know, that eight to 10 hours a week is worth it to make the amount of money that I made. I do upload these kinds of what sold videos pretty regularly. I try to get them up once a week, but because I've been behind, I've been doing like monthly videos. And after this one, I'm like pretty close to getting caught up. And so if you enjoy this kind of content, if you enjoy learning about what kind of stuff sells for me, what kind of stuff I wish I left behind, definitely make sure to subscribe. So let's just jump right in and we're going to start by talking about March 1st, which was a Friday on which I sold nothing. Nothing sold on the 1st of March. So the month didn't start off super strong, but on Saturday, which was March 2nd on Mercari, I sold this new with tags Tarte, which is a pretty expensive brand. Like it retails for a very good amount, but the resale value is kind of meh, but it was this blue and white striped knit open front cardigan in a women's size large. I put the word preppy in the title. I could have also used the word like, you know, nautical. I could have used classic, lots of words that I could have used for this particular piece, but it sold for $32 on Mercari and I had $2 into it from an amazing sale that a local consignment store was having. So my net profit on that was $25.20. On Sunday, which was March 3rd, on eBay, I sold this Nike green swoosh short sleeve t-shirt in a men's size large. It was made of 100% cotton. I did have the word casual in the listing title as well. That one sold for $14.99, and I had $2 into it from a reseller who sold me all of her clothing inventory about a year into her reselling journey because she learned that she just didn't like to sell clothes. And that's what I mean. Like Everyone's reselling businesses can look the way that they want them to. She decided clothing is something that I absolutely hate listing. So she is sticking to hard goods, whereas I want to throw up all over myself when I have to sit down and list hard goods. It's so hard. Like, I just, I don't know how you guys do it if you sell hard goods. And I know people look at clothing sellers and they're like, how do you do that? Oh my gosh. I don't know. The hard goods thing. It is tough times for me in hard goods land. So I will stick to my clothing and I happily bought her clothing inventory off of her. And like I said, it came out to about $2 a piece. And so my net profit on that was $10.67, which isn't a lot, but I didn't have it listed for very much because there was some cracking on that swoosh graphic and you know, $14.99, I feel like I was actually kind of lucky to even get that amount for it. And then on mm -hmm. eBay, I sold this new with tags, Astra the label Bianca, that was the style name, halter tropical floral romper in a women's 
women's size medium. That sold for $22. I had $5.10 into it from a local consignment store and I made a net profit of $12.50. I did have that for a while. I purchased it in December of 2022 and that's generally how long I have to hold on to Astor pieces for. I feel like they never move quickly for me. The fastest that they'll move is maybe like six months, but I don't even know that I've had an Astor piece that sells that quickly. So if you have really good luck with this brand, please let me know your secrets. Like maybe there's a specific style from this brand that does well and everything else stinks. I don't know. I think I'm honestly probably not going to pick it up very much in the future just because like I said, I haven't had very good luck with it. The next thing to sell on Poshmark was this vintage pair of Reebok black side stripe nylon track pants in a men's size extra large. They did have an ankle zip and they were, you know, just kind of nice athletic pants. The only reason I listed these is because they were vintage. There was actually a small hole in the pants as well, but I was able to sell them for $20. I had $2 into them from the same reseller who decided she didn't want to sell clothes anymore. And so my net profit on those was $14. My next Poshmark sale was this new with tags champion sleeveless black and white v-neck jersey this is kind of an embarrassing <laughs> sale because I have probably had this in my possession since like 2018 or 2019 something like that so there used to be a Salvation Army in my area. This Salvation Army shut down <laughs> during COVID. It has not been around for so long, but there was a Salvation Army that at one point got a ton of inventory from a local athletic store that had shut down. You know, like a store that just sells things like, you know, like a Foot Locker, like jerseys and gym shoes and that sort of thing. So that store had shut down and either they gave all of their stuff to Salvation Army or they sold it to them for cheap. But this Salvation Army had a ton of new with tags, champion pieces, Nike jerseys, all that kind of stuff. But like plain jerseys, like I think this was a place you would go to customize jerseys or if you had to buy jerseys for your team or something like that. And because I was so new to reselling, I was just like, new with tags, Nike champion, yes, I'll buy it. Not realizing that these were not good things to buy. And so I've had this, like I said, since like 2018 or 2019, which is shameful. And you might be asking yourself, why didn't you just get rid of it? Why didn't you donate it to a Goodwill? Or like, why have you held on to it for so long? But I don't know. The way I see it, I've already done the work. I've already photographed the item. I've listed it. I've done all the things. It's already living in my bins. I'm just going to let it stay there until it sells. Like, why would I undo all that hard work? Even if I'm only going to make five or six bucks off of it, why would I make no money instead of some money, especially when I've done the work? I personally have never understood it when people are like, every once in a while I go through my inventory and pull things that are really old and just go ahead and donate them. I guess that would make sense if you're in a much smaller space and you don't have the space to hold on to bad buys. I got all the space in the world. I could store like a thousand bad buys if I wanted to. Not that I want to, but that's just to kind of explain why I don't go through that process of pulling out stale inventory or bad buys and donating them. I'm just gonna let them sit. Like I'm gonna let them sit until they sell because the hope is that they eventually will. You know, sometimes it only takes six years. And after six years of living rent-free in my home, I made a net profit of $6.05. Good things come to those who wait. On Monday, which was March 4th, I sold on Poshmark this Cabbie Grand Slam, that was the style name, double-breasted nautical navy blue blazer jacket in a women's size 4. That sold for $42, which I think is a great price to get on a jacket blazery piece like this, and especially for a Cabbie piece. Cabbie is, to be honest with you, pretty oversaturated on reselling platforms, but some Cabbie can do really well. And the best way to find out is to look for the style number on the material tag and you can even search like cabbie style number 647. You can just type that into Poshmark or type that into eBay and most likely out will pop that exact item that you have in your hands and you'll see the style name, you'll see stock photos of the item, and you'll see what other people have those items priced at. But most importantly of all, you can see how many of that particular item is listed right now versus how many have sold. That's what it means to check the sell through rate of an item. You're trying to calculate the likelihood that this item is going to sell. And generally what you're looking for is an item where there are not very many listed, 
but many have sold, which means that there is a high demand for this item, but there just are not enough listed. And most likely if you list yours, it's gonna sell really fast. Versus you look up an item, there are a ton listed and only like one or two <laughs> have sold. That means nobody really wants this item and yet so many people have them listed for sale. And that probably means the only way to sell your item is to be the person offering it at the lowest price. But if there's not really that many of an item and so many of that item have sold, or you know, even if there's like a hundred listed, but like a thousand have sold in the last 30 days, that's a pretty good indication that yours is probably gonna sell pretty quickly too. And so if I remember correctly, while I was at my local Goodwill, before I put this in my cart and made the commitment to purchase it, I did some research in regards to the sell-through rate because I have been burned by cabbie before where I'll pick it up because I think it's cute or, you know, I just, it's cabbie, I'll just get it, it's cheap. And then I hold on to it for six years and I'm like, whoop. I learned my lesson the hard way. So I picked that up for $6.09 and I did offer discounted shipping on it because of Posture VA, which is a Chrome extension that I use that will automatically send out offers to likers for me five minutes after someone likes an item. That way I don't have to sit there and do it. Um, and after that discount, after my cost of goods, after my Poshmark fees, my net profit on that item was $25.49, which personally I think is great. I'm always aiming to make at least a $20 profit on all of my flips and I did just that on that item, but not on a lot of the items that I've talked about so far. The next thing to sell on Poshmark was this pair of loft army green legging skinny pants in a size six petite. This is not the type of item that I recommend people run out and source. Um, I've had this for a while and the only reason I listed it is because it came in a thread up bulk rescue box. I got the box for the purpose of doing an unboxing on whatnot and like selling through the items as I showed them in my show. And I sold enough stuff from the unboxing on whatnot to pay for the cost of, you know, the rescue box itself and then some. And so anything that I had to list because it didn't sell, you know, live during that whatnot show, I didn't have any money into because I had already made all of my money from that box back, if that makes sense. And so I'm saying I had no cost of goods into that. My net profit was $11.58. But boy, did I I sit on that for quite some time because loft is oversaturated. This style of like legging pants is not super popular right now. So for all of those reasons, these took a while to sell and I didn't even make that much money on them. The next sale on Poshmark was this cloth and stone light wash printed collared chambray dress in a women's size small. That one sold for $25 and I had $3.47 into it from a local consignment store's birthday sale. And so my net profit on that was $16.53. Cloth and stone used to be a brand that people got so excited over and it's still a really great brand but it just doesn't command as high of a resale price as it used to. I really only pick it up if it's really cute and I'm getting it for super cheap. This one I did get for super cheap. Was it super cute? Uh, it was okay. <laughs> like it was all right. The next day was March 5th which was a Tuesday and I sold nothing that day. And then I accidentally skipped over the sale while recording, which is a shame because this was a really cool sale. It was this vintage Polo Ralph Lauren blue checkered full zip jacket. It's just so preppy, just so cool. And it had like a really nice lining to it. This was something that my mother-in-law actually gave me. It had belonged to my father-in-law. She gave me a ton of his clothes at one point and I listed it pretty high. I want to say around $65 because I thought it was unique. It was in great shape and I got a 50 $55 offer on it and you better believe I accepted that extremely quickly. I made a net profit of $44 on that sale since I didn't have anything into it and I always make a point to stop and pause and check out you know, especially vintage Polo Ralph Lauren or Ralph Lauren in general, because the quality is usually really good and I feel like the styles are still extremely desirable. So we're gonna move on to Thursday, which was March 7th. And on March 7th on eBay, I sold this exhilaration white neon beach hooded long sleeve swim cover in a youth girl size extra large. I don't really know why I even went ahead and listed that, but I think it was a while ago. A while ago, I would just go ahead and list children's clothing, but nowadays I don't list children's clothing. I don't source it. I'll, I'll pick up a piece here or there every once in a while, but typically I don't source it anymore just because it doesn't sell for that much. Unless you're getting really great brands, which I don't typically find in my area, it's not gonna sell for a lot. So instead, like when my kids outgrow their clothes, with my daughter, the first thing that we do is we offer it to her cousins, to my nieces, and whatever they don't want. There is like a, um, 
local children's consignment store and I'll just bring all the stuff there. And even though I don't make very much, I don't do any work. I just have to drive the pieces there, drop them off, and then, you know, they'll sell the items, I'll make some money. And I do that because if I list, you know, children's clothes online, I'm probably gonna make at most like five to ten dollars and it's just not really worth my time. Um, so this one sold for eight dollars on eBay and because I had nothing into it because someone gave it to us for free my net profit on that was six dollars and sixty two cents the next thing to sell on Poshmark was this pair of Levi's 505 straight leg blue medium wash jeans in a men's size 40 by 30. Um, those sold for $15, which was not a whole lot, but I think I got the offer and I was like, I really need to make some sales. And so I just went ahead and accepted. I had $2 into them from the reseller who does not like to sell clothing. And so I made a net profit of $10 on those. And then on the 8th, which was a Friday, on Mercari, I sold this pair of Skechers Biker Zippiest Suede Mush Ankle Booties um, in a women's size 11. These actually sold for $30. Um, I got these for $4.99 at my local Goodwill, and my net profit on those was $20.41. Now, I have had them for a while. I got them in December of 2022. I don't know when I actually got around to listing them, um, and I probably, to be honest, if you had them listed a little too high but the main reason I picked them up is because they were a size 11 and I know that women who wear like size 10 and up it's a little bit harder for them to find shoes just because companies don't make very many shoes in a size 10 or 11 or 12 when they make a run of shoes. They make a lot of eights and sevens and nines and things like that. But then even with like their size fives, which, you know, that's the size that I wear, they don't make very many because there's not very many people who wear a size five and they don't make as many of the larger sizes either. So whenever I find especially shoes in larger sizes that are pretty cute, I do try to pick them up. And then on Poshmark on the 8th, I sold this Newest Tags Chaps Brown Cable Knit Halter Knit Tank Top. It had like, you know, like feathers or like, I don't know, like beads and stuff on the tie and it was in a women's size small. I don't know. I saw this and I thought it was so cute. It was kind of confusing in the sense that Chaps is, you know, a part of the Ralph Lauren family and not really well known for stuff that looks like this. I feel like like this I didn't feel like was super on brand for chaps. And so I feel like people who are looking for this kind of boho, even kind of, you know, like the halter neck thing is kind of 90s. You know, I thought this had like a very boho look to it with the feathers and stuff. And I don't feel like people are searching for chaps boho pieces. You know what I mean? Like they're not going to put those words together in a search. Um, so even though I thought this was so cute, and I think I had it listed really high at like $40 or $50, again, just because I thought it was really cute, I eventually sold it for $20. I got an offer and I was like, I've had this listed for long enough. I need to just be realistic and let it go because nobody else had even sent an offer. I didn't have that many likes on it. I don't know, let me know down in the comments below. Am I crazy? Like, I feel like this is pretty cute. But it sold for 20, I had $3.85 into it. I got it as part of a reseller buyout and that was my average cost of goods per item from that buyout. And so my net profit was $12.15 on that. I'm trying to decide if I would have picked that up at the thrift store. I probably wouldn't have just because of the brand name. Like, I don't think it stood out enough even though I thought it was really cute it didn't stand out enough that I could overlook the fact that it was a chaps piece chaps just generally doesn't go for that much but because it was already in my possession I was like oh my gosh this is so cute it should go for so much it did not god that's cute on March 9th which was a Saturday on eBay, I sold this pair of Driftwood Maryland embroidered floral mid-rise skinny jeans in a size 28. I did use the keyword boho as well in the listing title because of the floral embroidery. I just thought they had like a very free-spirited look about them. And Driftwood jeans generally have that kind of vibe to them. Just kind of like earthy, hippie, one with the land. But I got these at a Goodwill in a town about an hour away. I had three students who qualified for Allstate Choir. So while they were in rehearsal, I went out and thrifted a lot because I didn't really have anything else to do while they were rehearsing. I did like actually attend the conference itself too a little bit, but I also did a lot of thrifting. So I went out thrifting and it was so interesting because I do really like driftwood jeans and I've had really good luck with them before in the past. I think a few years ago they were way more popular than they are now, but even now they can still command a good amount of money. And I remember being at this thrift store and being like, man, I'd really like to find some driftwood jeans today. And then I found these. Now these were not like the most recent style or anything like that. 
that, you know, they were a skinny jean, but I just thought that was so cool that I had literally just thought about the brand and then I found them at that Goodwill manifesting. But those sold for $29.90. That was an offer that I had sent out to Likers. I had $7.88 into those. And so my net profit on those was $18.54. The next sale was over on Mercari, and it was this pair of Real Legends blue cargo shorts in a men's size 2XL. I put words like fishing and outdoor and casual and camping in the listing title as well because I had characters left over. That is one tip I have is if you have 80 characters for your listing title, try to use as many of those 80 characters as possible. If you've already like put in the brand name and the color and the size and you know what it is that you're selling and you've got space left over, just start throwing in keywords. Like ask yourself if I were looking for these what would I type into the search bar to find them? Maybe you're looking for fishing shorts which is what these are and that's why I added the word fishing or maybe you're looking for shorts to wear while camping you know I'm just trying to think of what are the words that people might use when they're typing in that search bar and I'm gonna throw those at the end of a listing title if I've still got some characters left which is why that particular listing title had so many keywords at the end of it but those sold for $15 on Mercari and I had $2 into those from the reseller who didn't like to resell clothing. And then for some strange reason, I ended up paying for shipping on this on Mercari. I always select on Mercari to have the buyer pay for shipping, but sometimes when you're listing on Mercari, you just gotta be really careful because sometimes they'll default it to where you're paying for shipping. Mercari in general is just so weird when you list on it. You just have to kind of make sure you're not moving too fast and check every single thing as you're doing it. I've had times where I'll, you know, publish the listing and days later I'll notice that one of my listings is just called like t-shirt and I'm like what I just told you how I like to use all 80 characters how come all of a sudden I've got this listing called t-shirt and that's because sometimes you'll have like a nice long beautiful listing title and then Mercari will change it on you they'll just kind of default to what they think it is it is the strangest thing so just be really careful when listing on Mercari not to move too quickly otherwise you might run into mistakes like this where you say sure I'll pay for shipping and end up making only three dollars and 16 cents of net profit on this item no I would never have offered free shipping on this that was a mistake and then on March 10th which was a Sunday on eBay I sold this pair of Vionic black high tide platform orthopedic thong flip-flops um, or like sandals in a women's size 10 so again with that larger size these sold for $24.99 for a pair of flip-flops but that's because Vionic is a very well respected shoe brand they're known for comfort a lot of people just swear by them they say they can't wear any other brand I got these at a Goodwill outlet in Seattle at all a couple years ago. So I have had these for a while. I probably did have them listed a little too high, but they did eventually sell for my full asking price of $24.99. Um, so I had $2 into them. That was my average cost of goods that day at the bins when I went two years ago while visiting my parents. And so my net profit on those was $19.39. And then on that same day on Mercari, I sold this Sanctuary Safari Red Utility Cargo Lightweight Jacket in a women's size large. It did have tab sleeves, which means like you can fold the sleeves up and then there's like that little thing that sticks out where you can like loop it over and essentially change the length of the sleeve. That's not like a super popular thing in clothing right now. And typically when you see that, it means that this is probably a little bit older of an item. But regardless, it sold for $29 on Mercari. This time it did not accidentally force me to pay for shipping. So after my cost of goods, which was $3.47 at a local consignment store, my net profit on that was $21.09 on like an old Older sanctuary piece. I actually have strangely good luck with sanctuary as a brand. I feel like a lot of people sleep on the brand, but I actually do pretty well with it. And then on that same day on Poshmark, I sold this American Giant yellow lightweight full zip hoodie sweatshirt in a women's size extra small. This was super thin. It did not feel special. You know how everyone's like, oh, this butter is soft. This was just like a normal, super lightweight cotton material. But this brand, American Giant, I don't know, they have a following. I remember I found very plain Jane looking black pants by this brand years ago, and they sold like that for like 50 bucks a piece. So when I saw this item, I remembered, you know, the brand, I remembered like the positive experience from selling it in the past. And I looked up comps because I was like, surely this can only sell for like $15. 
but it sold for 25 within a span of a few days. I got it while again, you know, with my students at their Allstate Music Conference. So I picked it up at a Goodwill. I got it for $5.44 and my net profit on that was $14.56. So that was a cool day because in this video, I really only sold things across three different platforms. It was Poshmark, eBay, and Recari. And on that particular day, I sold items across all three of those platforms. And that's because of a Chrome extension that I use called List Perfectly. It is what enables me to cross list items really quickly. I also use it for like sales analytics just to get a better sense of like the numbers of my reselling business so that I actually know what's going on within my reselling business. But if you want to check out List Perfectly, maybe you want a cross listing software to help you cross list, you know, a little bit more quickly to other platforms. I'll have a link down below. If you use my coupon code Becky Park, it actually helps you save 30% off of your first month. So definitely check it out if you're looking to add more platforms to your reselling business. But that was a cool day of selling across three different platforms. And then on Monday, March 11th on eBay, I sold this pair of Zia Active Everywhere pull on joggers. They had an ankle zip, they were gray, and they were in a women's size medium. These I picked up at a local consignment store and they sold for $25. I had $3.75 into them and so my net profit was $16.93. I've talked about how Zia was a brand that was selling so well for me, like probably around like three years ago, but lately the resale value has just dipped so low. Um, the only thing that I think is really worth picking up are, you know, joggers like these, maybe some of their like jackety type things, but leggings in general, I have to sit on for quite some time now. Tops, not worth it. But you know, these joggers actually did pretty well. And then on the 12th, which was a Tuesday, I had no sales, but on Wednesday the 13th on eBay, I did sell this Ann Taylor blue puffed sleeve. And now for a quick Becky has ADHD moment. Whenever I say puffed sleeve, it always makes me think of Anne of Green Gables, how she so desperately wanted a dress with puffed sleeves, but Miranda wouldn't hear of it because it was such a waste of fabric just for the sake of her vanity. But then Matthew goes out and buys her a dress with puffed sleeves. Look at the puffs. Oh my gosh, I just love Anne of Green Gables so much. But it was like a three fourth sleeve length and it was in a size small. That one sold on eBay for $8. That was another piece that I got in a Thread Up Rescue box, except that one was not part of like, you know, a whatnot unboxing. It was something that I got forever ago. I just bought the box, you know, to resell the items. So I had about $2 into each item and my net profit on that item was $3.96. And you might be saying to yourself, why did you even list it? And that's because at this time, I was just listing anything that was in my home. And again, I'm not gonna pull items just because they've been sitting around for a while because you know, I'm just, if it's already listed, if it's in my bins, I'm just gonna leave them alone. On the 14th of March, which was a Thursday, on Poshmark, I sold this vintage Wrangler plaid pearl snap button short sleeve shirt in a men's size extra large. I put the word Western in the title because, you know, it was like a cowboy shirt. That sold for $21 on Poshmark with discounted shipping. Again, because of Pasha VA sending out offers to likers for me five minutes after someone liked the item. Um, Pasha VA will also share your closet. It'll even like follow other people people or like share other people's listings if you want it to do that. It does a lot of things. It'll relist listings. And that's another Chrome extension that I have a coupon code for if you want to check it out. It's the same coupon code, Becky Park, and it helps you save 20% off of your first payment with Posture VA. But that one sold for $21. I had $2 into it from the reseller who didn't want to resell clothing anymore. And so I made a net profit of $12.78 on that. Here is another sale that I just somehow didn't get into the original recording for some reason, but it is this BCBG Max Azria Ultra Green Levin, that is the style name, 100% rayon pleated dress tunic in a women's 2X S. That is actually from my sister-in-law. She gave it to me a while ago. This has been listed for a while, mainly because I just feel like BCBG Max Azria doesn't sell super fast. It's another brand that's pretty expensive retail. It doesn't resell for a ton, and I think it's a little bit older of a style, but it did end up finally selling after being relisted many times on many platforms. It sold for $16. I didn't have any money into it, and so my net profit on that was $11.89, and that was pretty promoted at 3% as well. And then on the 15th of March, which is a Friday, on eBay, I sold this Issa London, which 
is a very expensive brand and can actually sell for a decent amount on reselling platforms as well. But it was this blue long sleeve draped tie waist v-neck dress in a women's size 10. It was made of rayon. I thought it was beautiful. I feel like Issa London is known for, it's kind of like their jersey knit material and they just have like long, flowy, sometimes almost like Grecian looking pieces because of the way that they're draped, but they're just very classic. They're perfect for the office. Like you would just look so in control and sophisticated in a business setting if you were wearing this dress. But this sold for $26 on eBay, which is a lot less than it should have sold for, except for the fact that it had a pretty bad flaw on the shoulder. Like I don't remember exactly. It was either like holes or like rips. Like it just looked like something had run over it at one point. I don't know. And I didn't notice it when I picked it up at the thrift store. And I also had a 40% off sale running and this sold as part of that sale. Unfortunately, I had $8.50 into it from a local consignment store. And so my net profit was only $12.52. But that's not really a knock on Issa London as a brand. It's really more so because of the giant flaw that was on the shoulder. Also, also on eBay that day, I sold this pair of Levi's Boyfriend Dark Wash Blue Jeans in a women's size 20W. Those sold for $20.99 and they were promoted at 3%. I promote all of my listings on eBay at 3%. I had $3.75 into those from a local consignment store and so my net profit was $14.39. I also sold this Armani Exchange gray mock neck knit quarter zip sweater in a men's size large. Um, this was made of like a wool and angora blend. This sold for $30 on eBay that was also part of my 40% off sale and this actually was in a pretty recent haul video and I remember being like I don't know if I should have picked this up because generally speaking I don't pick up Armani Exchange but I just thought it looked so cool and actually when I looked up similar sweaters to this one online comps were pretty decent and so that actually sold extremely quickly and like I said it sold for $30. I had $5.44 into it from a Goodwill from when I went thrifting while my students were in rehearsal and I'll actually list that haul video right here since I'm talking about so many items that I actually showed in that haul video. But yeah, anything that's from that haul that has already sold is a pretty quick flip because I sourced those items probably mid to late January. Probably didn't get around to listing them until at the earliest, like mid-February. And so that means they only took a month or two to sell. So my net profit on that was $14.10. And then on the 16th of March, which was a Sunday, on eBay, I sold this beautiful Talbot skirt. It was this black watch plaid green pleated midi skirt in a women's plus size 14. I don't know it was just gorgeous and it sold for $38.99. I had it priced higher but again it sold as part of that 40% off sale. It was promoted at 3%. I only had $3.85 into it because it was part of a reseller buyout that I did last year and so my net profit on that was $28.88 which is a great flip. Talbot's pieces can do so well. You just have to pick up the ones that are beautiful. Don't pick up the ugly ones, which I think is safe to say of any item from any brand, don't pick up the ugly pieces. But this really was such a stunner. Also on eBay, I sold this pair of Seven for All Mankind Kimmy Straight Leg Dark Wash Mid-Rise Jeans in a women's size 24. I've had these for a while. I got them in a DIY denim rescue box from Thread Up, but they sold for $15 after being listed for a couple years. And I didn't have any money into them because again, I did an unboxing on whatnot, sold through enough items from that show to pay for the box itself. So anything that I listed online, I'm saying I had no money into. And so my net profit on those was $13.23. I feel like Seven for All Mankind, even though it's so expensive retail, unless you find the Dojo jeans, which are those those even still popular? I've to this day never found a pair of dojo jeans by Seven for All Mankind and I don't even know if they're really worth anything anymore. They used to be all the rage. People would go crazy when they found them. If they're like a super modern pair of Seven for All Mankind, maybe they can do okay, but generally speaking, I'm not able to sell them for any more than like $25, $35. And then I also sold this pair of Torrid Black Faux Suede Woven Trim Buckle Stacked Heel Ankle Boots in a women's size 10. Those I picked up at a local consignment store for $2.60. That was part of a birthday sale that they were having. You just throw things in a little plastic bag and the entire bag costs a certain amount. So my average cost of goods for that shopping trip was $2.60. Those sold for $14 on eBay. I had $2 
$2.60 into them from a local consignment store's birthday sale, and so my net profit on those was $8.24. I probably could have gotten more for these, but I just wasn't super confident in them. So when I got the offer, I was like, yeah, I'll just let them go. The next thing to sell that day was a pair of Abercrombie & Fitch, the 90s ultra high rise jeans. They were part of the Curve Love collection. They had ankle slits and they were in a women's size 28. I feel like Abercrombie has been having a moment. I've heard a lot of people just across all social media talking about how their Abercrombie & Fitch jeans especially have been selling really well. These sold for $27. $7.90. That was an offer that I sent out to watchers. I had $5 into them from a friend of mine who does like, um, she'll sell stuff to me at wholesale pricing, basically how much she paid for an item. And so my net profit on those was $19.90. The next thing to sell was this new with tags, Lululemon beige, awake to lace sports bra in a women's size 32C. I put words like yoga and it's leisure athleisure at the end just to fill out those 80 characters that I have for the listing title um, that sold for $14.99 I've had that for like four years at this point like a friend of mine brought a bunch of clothes over and I just kind of like bought the clothes off of her like I went through things one at a time and was like here like this is the amount that I'll give you for your clothes based off of how much I think I can sell them for kind of like what a Play-Dohs does I definitely gave her too much for everything and I held on to a lot of pieces for a while but this finally <laughs> sold like I said three or four years later I don't remember how much I gave her you know for each piece and I didn't do like a cost per item breakdown or anything. Again, this was at a time when I was not really keeping track of my numbers. I'm going to estimate that I gave her like $8 for this. I just remember being like extremely generous with how much I was giving her because she's a friend, you know? So I'm going to say that my net profit on that was $3.50, which is not amazing. I also sold on eBay this pair of Tail Tech Black Bermuda Golf Shorts in a women's size 10. These sold on eBay for $9.90. That was an offer that I sent out to watchers. I had $3.25 into these from a local consignment store so my net profit on those was five dollars and that's because a while ago I sold a skirt by the brand tail I don't think it was tail tech and that skirt sold for like 30 or 40 dollars and I was like whoa this is a great brand I need to make sure that I keep an eye out for it and then I saw during like a sidewalk sale at this particular consignment store that they had three of these like kind of golf Bermuda shorts back to back on a rack and it, the brand was tail tech but I thought it was the same brand so I picked them all up I was super excited got them home looked at comps and I was like oh my gosh these are awful <laughs> but I just went ahead and listed them and made my five dollars and now that five dollars will go towards something that hopefully will make me a hundred dollars the next thing to sell was this Nike Golf Blue Striped Fit Dry Golf Polo shirt in a men's size extra large. It had moisture wicking material. That sold on Poshmark actually for $14. I got that from a reseller buyout that I did pre-COVID, guys. Like a long time ago. I had a dollar and two cents into each of the items that she sold me and so my net profit was ten dollars and three cents and it only took like five years or something. No big deal. And then on March 17th, which was a Sunday, on eBay I sold this Kenneth Cole Reaction black two-button blazer in a men's size 40R. I put the words like formal, suit, career at the end of the listing title because I had characters left over. That sold for $12.90. That was an offer that I sent out to watchers. I had two dollars into it from my friend who just like gave me a bunch of clothes before he moved and I ended up like just kind of throwing money at him as he was leaving. I was like don't just give me all this stuff for free because it was like a mountain of clothing. So I'm saying it probably came out to like two dollars a piece but I made a net profit of six dollars and thirty three cents. Kenneth Cole reaction not really a brand that I actively go out and look for for my reselling business because it doesn't sell for a lot but you know I had it in my house I went ahead and listed it made a little bit of money and moved on. The next thing to sell on eBay was this lot of two Neutrogena Sheer Zinc Oxide Kids Mineral Sunscreen Sticks with SPF 50 plus and they were like little small guys 1.5 ounces. This lot of two sunscreen sticks sold for $10.79. It was part of that same 40% off sale that I was running and I had $5 into that lot so I don't do this very often. I don't do retail arbitrage ever actually, but I saw these at Target. They were being discontinued. And oftentimes if something is being discontinued, it's worth looking at because, you know, people will actually kind of hoard items if they love it, if they find out that it's being discontinued. So I purchased these at $2.50 a piece. So $5 total for that lot. 
it only sold for 10 something. I mean, my net profit was $7 and 69 cents. I didn't even double my money <laughs> on that. And that's why I don't do retail arbitrage. That's why I don't really like to sell hard goods. I'm just not good at it. Like I just don't have an eye for it. I don't know a lot about hard goods. It's just not something that makes me feel good about myself. So I don't do it for all of those reasons. The next day of sales was March 18th, which was a Monday. And I sold this burgundy v-neck sheer lace maxi cover-up dress in a women's size small it was made of 100 percent cotton you'll notice i didn't say a brand name and that's because there was no brand name on it like it was maybe just like a little thing that was sold at a boutique or something i got that as part of a thread up bulk mixed rescue box as well so i'm saying i had about two dollars into it um, it sold for ten dollars and my net profit on that was six dollars and 55 cents that's another thing that i did not need to list i thought it was really cute and that's the only reason it must have sold is because of style but it is really hard for people to find things solely based on style and if you're going to sell something solely based on style you want to make sure that your keywords are absolute perfection like again and you're gonna ask yourself like what words would people have to type in order for this item to pop up in the search results you just got to be really uh, crafty when it comes to thinking about which keywords to use. Also that day on eBay, I sold this pure Jill, J Jill pink kimono knit three fourth sleeve sweater top in a women's size extra small. It had a rolled neck that sold for $18 and 50 cents. And that's something that I got at my local consignment store as part of their like color tag sale. I had $2 into it. And so my net profit was $13 and 71 cents. I normally would not have picked this up mainly because it's a size extra small, but because it was $2, I was like, you know what? It's really, cute. It's J. Jill, which is a great bread and butter brand for me. We'll just see how it does. And I didn't end up sitting on it for too long. I thought I made a decent profit on that. So I was happy with it. The next thing to sell was on Poshmark and it was this Harper Canyon striped sleeveless dress in a youth extra large. That was another youth piece. It was another thing that I had for many, many years. It was another thing that someone gave to us for free. You know, I listed it probably when my daughter was like six or seven. And at that time, it just seemed silly to hold on to something and keep it in her closet when she's not gonna be able to wear it for like six or seven years. But at this point, that's almost how long it feels like it's been in my closet. But it sold for $10 on Poshmark. That was with discounted shipping and my net profit was $4.07. Hardly a win. On Poshmark, I also sold this pair of Star Wars gray animated swim trunks in a men's size small. They had pockets, they had Yoda and Stormtroopers on them. I did have to use Google Lens to figure out what the Stormtroopers were called because I am not a Star Wars person, so I didn't know that they were Stormtroopers. But those sold for $15. I had $2 into them from the reseller who does not like to sell clothing, and my net profit was $12.78. On March 19th, which was a Tuesday, on Poshmark, I sold this pair of Echo Soft brown nubuck suede comfort lace-up shoes for women in a european size 41 or a u.s size 10 so again a little bit larger of a size i had those listed for i don't know maybe like eight to ten months so not a quick flip but they did sell for 34 dollars. i had 3.99 into them from a local thrift store um, this particular thrift store it's not a goodwill but they price items really well typically so um 3.99 for a pair of shoes that's really great and so my net profit was 21 dollars 19 i was not excited about these shoes in the least but because i was like 3.99 for echo shoes in really good condition yes please and that's how i was able to make a net profit of 20 dollars or more on march 19th, which was a Tuesday. On Poshmark, I sold this pair of Woolrich Sage Green 1985 cargo elastic waist shorts in a women's size 14. Those I got from the reseller who does not like to resell clothing, so I only had $2 into them. They sold for $21 actually, which I was kind of surprised by. I think I had them listed for $25. They also sold with this kind of shipping because of Posher VA, so another Posher VA sale. I believe I had 10 Posher VA sales this week on Poshmark, and just to kind of give you an idea, I only sold 30 items total on Poshmark this month, so a third of those sales came from using Poshmark VA. That's just cold hard facts. That's just numbers. So I'm not saying that the same will happen to you, but what I'm saying to you is that Posture VA helped me make a third of my sales, which is a significant chunk of them. But yeah, after discounted shipping, after Poshmark's fees, my cost of goods, my net profit was $12.78. The next thing to sell was another super, super old listing. It was this pair of Skechers Shape Ups walking toning shoes. Um, they were gray and they were in a size nine and a half. Those... <laughs> 
I don't even know how long I've had them. I've had them for so long. I don't remember where I got them. I don't remember how much I paid for them. I know I like paid for them. I know I didn't get them for free or anything like that. I'm going to say I had $6 into them. They sold for $18 after like at least five years, at the very least. And so my net profit was $6.38. So a dollar per year that I had them. Also on the 19th, I sold this pair of Echo Soft Brown Nubuck Suede Comfort Lace-Up Shoes in a women's European size 41 or US size 10. These were not the cutest thing. They're more of a practical shoe, but I got them because they were only $3.99 at a local thrift store. This particular thrift store in town, they just price things so reasonably, and that's why I picked these up. These also sold with this kind of shipping because of Posh VA. So did the Skechers Shape Ups that I just talked about. Um, but I made a net profit of $21.19. Even if I don't think something is cute, if I know that there's like a function or a utility to them and people will buy them, not necessarily because they want like the cutest thing, but because they just need something like this. And if I can get said item for cheap enough, I'm gonna pick them up because someone is gonna buy them. And even though I'm not like invested in them as far as like, oh, they're so cute. If I'm gonna make money off of them, I will pick them up gladly. And then on Wednesday, March 20th, I sold this Anthropology HWR Monogram Vedette, that's the style name, cashmere blend fur collar cardigan in a women's size medium. That sold for $42. I had it listed for 50, but again, Posture VA sent out offers to likers for me. Five minutes after someone liked the item, they accepted. And I had $3.85 into that item from a reseller buyout that I did last year. So my net profit was $20. $27.73. I did have to sit on that for, again, just like maybe six to eight months, but I was very happy with that flip. Anthropology can still sell, especially if it's high quality and made of good materials. The next thing to sell on Poshmark was this pair of Jambu. <laughs> I don't know, that brand name just makes me laugh. It was this pair of Blossom, I think that was the style name, and it had these like flowers all over them. They were sandals, like Mary Jane flat sandals, um, Altera, I think it just said Altera on there somewhere, I don't know. They were in a women's size eight and a half, they were made of faux leather. I got those at a Goodwill outlet in Denver when I went um, with my family over fall break. We have like a week long vacation in the fall. So we went to Denver, Colorado um, last October. I had $2 into those and my net profit was $10.80. I probably didn't need to pick those up, but they did sell, you know, kind of fast. On Thursday, which was March 21st, on eBay, I sold this pair of TC & Co, which is like that Toad & Co, Supply Blue Dark Wash Stretch Slim Jeans in a men's size 34 by 30. Those sold for $27.99 on eBay, which was my full asking price. Um, I had $3 into them. They came to me in a Thread of Rescue box, and so my net profit was $22.17. And then on the 22nd, which was a Friday, I had no sales, but on the 23rd on eBay, I sold this J. Crew Factory pair of blue flat front chinos in a men's size 32 by 30. Um, they were made of 100% cotton. They sold for $19.99. That was also my full asking price, and they were promoted at 3%. Those were my husband's, so I didn't have any money into them, and my net profit was $14.81. I don't like to pick up these kinds of like J. Crew Factory chino pants anymore because there are so many on reselling platforms, um, and they generally don't sell for very much but because they were my husband's I didn't have any money into them I was like I'll just go ahead and list them and they actually sold really 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 fast I listed them in February they sold in March you know if they're my husband's I'll go ahead and list them I also sold this pair of Aritzia Wilfred effortless high-waisted wide leg twill pleated pants in a women's size 4 these sold so fast. This is like a very popular pair of pants by Aritzia. They sold for $50 on eBay. I got them at a Goodwill in a Chicago suburb. I think we were there for like a gymnastics meet and um, we spent the night because the meet went so late. And then the next day I just went to the Goodwill for a little bit um, and I got so much good stuff. I remember, I'll link that haul video right here. Um, but these I had $7.99 into and so my net profit was $33.62. Some Aritzia can do really, really well. The next thing to sell was over on Poshmark and it was this Bowden red denim stretch pencil skirt in a women's size 10R. That I got from my reseller friend who just sells me clothing at wholesale pricing. So I paid about $4 for that. It sold for $18 on Poshmark, and I made a net profit of $10.40. Not the best flip. I, I just kind of wanted to try out Bowden Bottoms. Actually, like immediately after I had another sale of Bowden Bottoms, um, 
yeah, I think Bowdoin is honestly more well known for their prints, like their printed pieces, their dresses, you know, stuff like that. But, um, you know, also not like a horrible sale, I guess. And then the next sale was another Bowdoin piece. It was this pair of the Trafalgar straight leg high rise blue dark wash jeans in a women's size six. These definitely did better than the skirt. These sold for $30 and I had $10.05 into them from a pop-up consignment sale that comes into my town twice a year. So my net profit on that was only $13.95. But what that shows me is Bowdoin jeans maybe are worth it. You just don't wanna have too much money into them because it looks like generally they're gonna sell between that 25 to 35 dollar range and you also want to be really careful because with their sizing they're gonna put the UK sizing first and I actually had these listed with the wrong sizing for a while until someone was asking about them and they asked specifically about the size and that's when I realized that I had the sizing wrong so I had to edit my listing and tell that person I'm sorry <laughs> these are actually not the size that you're looking for and then they finally sold I'm glad they did not sell when I had the incorrect sizing listed because that would have been super annoying. The next Poshmark sale was this pair of Athleta Tribeca cropped wide leg snap button tear away black pants in a women's size 10. These I got from my very first ever clothes mentor sourcing trip. Um, again, when my students were at that Allstate Music Conference, there was a clothes mentor in that town. They were having an 80% off sale, so I went buck wild. I will put that video right here. I got so much stuff at that clothes mentor and I didn't start listing those items until like earlier in March. So these sold extremely quickly. I only had $3.60 into these. They sold for $35. That was a great flip. So my net profit on those pair of pants was $24.40. And then on March 24th, which was a Sunday, on eBay, I sold this pair of Cole Haan pink patent leather Alessandra, that was the style name, ballet flats in a women's size eight and a half. They had like a little bow on top and those sold for $18. I had $5 into them from a local consignment store and my net profit on those was $10.47. Some Cole Haan can do really well, especially if it's a lot more recent of a style and very trendy. This was neither of those things. I'm not surprised that they sold for as little as they did. Um, on Poshmark that day, I had another sale from the Clothes Mentor Hall. It was this Year of Ours, which I believe is a Revolve brand. Bella, that was the style. Winter green sweatshirt in a women's size medium. That is a very normal looking, average looking sweatshirt, but it sold for $28. I mean, it honestly was no different than like a Hanes sweatshirt, but because of the brand, it sold for $28. Um, I had only $2.20 into it from the Clothes Mentor, and so I still made a net profit of $20.20 on that. It's a perfect flip. I'm looking to make $20 profit on each transaction, and that's what I did there. And then on March 25th, which was a Monday, on Poshmark, I sold this pair of Chaco Outcross Blue Outdoor Water proof hiking sandals in a youth size two. Those sold for $20. I had $5 into them from a local Goodwill and my net profit was $11.03. Shoes is the one thing of children's that I will buy to resell and even then you still want to be really careful. Obviously that was not the best flip of my life or anything like that, but shoes generally I feel like parents are willing to pay up for a little bit just because, you know, kids wear them more than they wear like a t-shirt or something. Um, also on the 25th on Poshmark, I sold this Zenergy by Chico's leopard print full zip bomber jacket in a Chico size one, which translates to a US size eight. That sold for $29. I had $3.92 into it from a reseller buyout that I did it's like three years ago at this point. So I've had that for a while, but I made a net profit of $19.28. Zenergy by Chico's, that's an interesting brand to be selling on Poshmark, but I do list everything on Poshmark, even if it's not you know young and hip and trendy, because there are a lot of people who shop on Poshmark that are none of those things. Like they like Chico's, they like J. Jill, they like, you know, um, more mature women are also shopping on Poshmark. So I'm not going to, pick and choose which of my items go on Poshmark and which go on eBay. Everything that I have goes on Poshmark, eBay, and Mercari. And the only platform that I kind of curate which items I will list on there is Depop. On March 26th, which was a Tuesday, on eBay I sold this pair of Adidas high waist track pants with a black mesh lining. They were in a women's size large and those sold for $10. They actually were in a men's thread up rescue box, but they were a pair of women's pants, so. I had $3 into them from that thread up box. My net profit was $5. 
$3.04. To be honest with you, if those entered my home today, whether in the form of like a thread up box or like a reseller buyout, I would just consign them. I started consigning with that pop-up consignment sale that I like to shop at. So um, I would just consign them with that instead of going through the process of listing something like that. Cause I know that there's not a lot of value in those. Also on the 26th on eBay, I sold this foundry blue argyle short sleeve quick dry polo shirt in a men's size 2XL tall. Um, it was made of Pima cotton. That sold for $14 on eBay. I had $3.85 into it from a reseller buyout. My net profit was $7.50. But I listed it knowing that with it being like a 2XL tall, even though it wasn't a great brand, it was going to sell pretty quickly and it did. The next thing to sell was so silly. So it was um, over on Poshmark and it was this pair of new with tags, Frog Togs, Black Pro Action Advantage Waterproof Rain Pants. They were unisex in a size medium. These I got from the reseller buyout from the person who doesn't like to sell clothing. I had $2 into them. And to be honest, they only retailed for like I want to say $25 to begin with. It said so right on the price tag itself. So it's not like I was going to be able to get much more for them. But, you know, they're just great pants for this season, like for the spring, if you're going camping or fishing or things of that nature. They sold really fast for $17 with discounted shipping because of Pasha VA. And so my net profit on those was $9.58. So frog togs, if you find it out in the wild, you do not need to pick it up. And then on the 27th on eBay, I sold this pair of L.L. Bean Tech 2.5 hiking boots. Um, they had Prima Loft technology in them, 200 gram. They were like lace-up boots. They were waterproof in a men's size 11. Those sold on eBay for $41.90. That was an offer that I sent out to watchers. I had $7.99 into them from a Goodwill while I was out thrifting while my students were in rehearsal during that Allstate Music Conference. So my net profit on those was $30.04. I always love finding men's hiking boots. If they're in good condition, and they have things like Gore-Tex or Prima Loft, Warmth, they're going to usually do pretty well. And then, you know, L.L. Bean is a great brand. The next thing to sell on the 27th on eBay was this new with tags Zara lilac colored 100% linen oversized blazer in a women's size small. I put the word pastel in the listing title as well. This sold for $41.90 as well. That was something that I got from a viewer named Becky who will just send me boxes of inventory from time to time. Why? I don't know because she's my guardian angel. <laughs> like, I don't know why she is so kind and sweet to me, but she sent me this in a box and I made a net profit of $37.38 on that. So thank you so much, Becky. It was a beautiful piece. I knew it was going to sell so quickly. It probably sold within a month of being listed and it's because you're amazing. Thank you. Also on the 27th on eBay, I sold this Banana Republic black full zip cotton blend fleece jacket in a men's size small. That one sold for $10. It was promoted at 3% and it's something that I got from my friend. Um, he went to my church. I got it from him so many years ago, <laughs> like probably four years ago at this point. So even though I didn't have any money into it, I only made $9.03 on that and I just had it for way too long. The next thing to sell was over on Mercari and it was this Patagonia purple down puffer vest in a women's size medium. It was full zip and it had zippered pockets. That sold for $50 on Mercari, which I was so excited about. I had $9.99 into it from the Goodwill that I went to after my daughter's gymnastics meet. And so my net profit on that was $32.89. Just those puffer vests from Patagonia, they can still do pretty well, which is exciting. On Poshmark, I sold this Free People Delilah Rust Stripe Henley Crochet Collar Retro Shirt in a women's size small. I just thought this was so cute, and I actually picked it up at the Clothes Mentor for myself, but I tried it on at home. It did not look good on me, so I just went ahead and listed it. It sold for $30. I don't know why I'm saying I had no money into it. I absolutely did. Maybe it's because I wore it once to try it on. I don't know. That's silly. But I made a net profit of $24. In reality, probably closer to like $21, $22. The next thing to sell on Poshmark was this Armani Colezioni Ivory Silk Blend Shell and Blouse Lot or Set. I, the word set was probably better than lot. I don't know why I used the word lot, but it was in a women's size 10 and 12. So the shell and the outer piece were not the same size. And that's why I put that in the listing title. I made sure to, you know, state that in the description. But that sold for $63. And I think that was my highest price of the month in March, which is why you're going to see my March numbers are not amazing 
amazing. I had $10.50 into that from an estate sale that took place in my neighborhood, let's see, last August. And so my net profit on that was $37.88. And then on the 28th of March, which is a Thursday, I had no sales. But on the 29th, which was a Friday, on eBay, I sold another Pure Jill J. Jill piece. This was a blue floral kimono jacket. It was embroidered and it was a women's size medium made of 100% cotton. This I thought was so beautiful. I actually got it at the Goodwill while my students were in rehearsal. I got it to try on for myself. You know, if I liked how it looked on me, I was very much planning on keeping it and that would make that my very first J. Jill piece that I owned, but it did not look good on me. So I went ahead and listed it and it sold for $31.99 on eBay, which was so exciting. Um, I had $5.44 into that. So my net profit was $21.61. Another perfect flip. On Mercari, I sold this Madewell Flex 2.0 green dress. It was like part of their fitness line. It had a shelf bra in it and it had like shorts attached to it. That was in a size small. It sold for $34 on Mercari. And that one I had $3.50 into from the Goodwill after my daughter's gymnastics meet. So I made a net profit of $25.44 on that, which again is what I'm looking for. I'm looking to make at least $20. And it happened with that sale and that dress sold so fast. I want to say with in, you know, a few weeks of being listed. Also on Mercari this day, I sold this Athleta Dark Navy sleeveless peak scoop neck dress in a women's size medium. This was the first piece that I sold where I actually benefited from Mercari's change in who's going to pay for fees. So I sold this dress for $21.00 and I received $21 from Mercari for this dress. It was wild. There were no fees that I had to pay for. It was crazy. And so that wasn't my net profit. I did have $4.77 into that from a garage sale. Um, so my net profit was actually $16.23. But that is wild to think that from now on, the amount that it sells for is the amount that is going to make its way into my you know, Mercari balance. Now, you do have to pay $2 every time you want to pull your money out of your balance. And I do have a video where I share my thoughts on all of Mercari's changes right here. If you want to catch yourself up to speed in regards to what's going on in Mercari land, lots of unhappy people over there, but but I was pretty happy this day with my two Mercari sales. And then on the 30th of March, which was a Saturday, on Poshmark, I sold this Calvin Klein white floral off-the-shoulder sheath dress in a women's size four. Um, that one sold for $25. I don't know why I didn't have any money into that. Where did I get that from? I don't know. That clearly was not like mine, but I'm saying I had no money into it for some reason. Maybe someone gave it to me. So I had a net profit of $20. And then on the 31st, which was a Sunday, on eBay, I sold this $39.61 at Velvet. I don't know. It's like a weird diffusion line by Velvet. Um, but it was this pink tie-dye short sleeve t-shirt in a women's size small. That sold for $17. I had $3.99 into it because I have a coworker of mine who I'm doing a consignment deal with. So for items that net me $25 or more, I give her 50% of the profit. But if it's less than $25 of net profit, then I will give her 40%. This baby only sold for $13 and it was promoted at 3%. So she got 40% of the cut, which was $3.99. And I got 60%, which was $5.98. So no one really made it out rich, but we both made a little bit of money. Also on eBay, I sold this Lauren Ralph Lauren beige 100% linen button-up collared shirt in a women's size large. That one sold for $24.90. I had $3.85 into it from a reseller buyout that I did last year. It sold for $19.90, and so my net profit was $11.87. I also sold on Mercari this Leopards and Roses, never heard it. I put the word art to wear <laughs> in the listing title because it was just so funky. There were things like hanging off of it. And I don't know, it looked kind of like something that an art teacher would wear or something, but it was a full zip Nepal sweater jacket in a women's size medium. That sold for $28 on Mercari. I don't know why this one is saying that I did pay for fees, but the other one I didn't. I don't know. I'm so confused. But this one I had $2 into from a bulk mixed rescue box. And so my net profit was $21.66 on that. Maybe it's like based on when the sale clear. I don't know. It, yeah. 
And then also on the 31st on Poshmark, I sold this leather suede brown fringe western open front vest in a women's size extra large. That one also doesn't have a brand name, but it was made of real suede, so it sold for $30 on Poshmark. I got that at the same estate sale where I got the Armani Collezioni pieces, and I had $12.25 into this particular piece, so my net profit was only $11.75, but you know, I just thought it was such a cool piece, I wanted to make sure that I moved it on to a new home. I also sold this pair of Everlane the Way High Jean in a women's size 30 regular. They were a light wash made of organic cotton. I got them at the Goodwill after, you know, my kids gymnastics meet. Um, they sold for $35, which, you know, Everlane jeans, some of them are going to sell for a decent amount and some of them are not really going to sell for very much at all. But I picked these up because I could tell they were a little bit more of a recent style. And I did look up comps and comps were like, yeah, you should get them. So I paid $6.99 for them at that Goodwill. My net profit was $21 dollars and one cent and then the last sale of the week my god if you guys are still here you guys are troopers thank you for hanging out with me this long but this was a pretty good sale it was a lily pulitzer dress um the style name was teresa kamikaze and it was the sequin 100 silk floral one sleeve dress in a women's size eight it was just such a showstopper. There were many flaws. There were like a few sequins missing throughout. There were pit stains, but I got it because it was at a garage sale of my friend who just sells me stuff at wholesale pricing. So I had $4.77 into that dress. Um, and also, you know, there was discounted shipping on that dress because of Pasha VA. And so my net profit was $26.81, even with the flaws. You know, mine sold for less obviously than the same dress that was in pristine condition, but even with with the flaws, comps dictated that I'd still be able to make some good money off of that. So I'm glad I picked it up, even though, you know, it had a couple of those issues. So let's finally talk about my numbers for the month of March. On Poshmark, I sold 30 items for a gross sales amount of $826. But once you factor in my cost of goods and my fees and shipping discounts that I offered, you know, thanks to Posh or VA, my net profit was $521.88. On eBay, I had 34 sales and I can't even figure out my gross sales amount. It would just take too much time because of the way that eBay shows their numbers and stuff. But my net profit was $477.12. And on Mercari, I sold eight items for a gross sales amount of $239. But my net profit after fees and cost of goods dropped to $166.06. So in total, for for the month, my net profit for the month of March was $1,165.08. That's how much I made as a part-time reseller investing about eight to 10 hours a week in my reselling business. I don't know if that sounds like a good amount to you. I don't know if it sounds like, yeah, it's not really worth it. I will say that's on the lower end of what I typically make in a month from reselling. And it's just because of life, you know, life happens. I've been very busy in the month of March. We also were gone on a trip during spring break um, for like a week or so. So, you know, there was a lot of stuff going on. I'm happy with the amount that I made and I'm happy you're here with me to hear about all of my sales and just to kind of hear about my part-time reselling journey. So if you did enjoy this video, if you felt like you learned anything, go ahead and hit that like button. That lets YouTube know that they should tell other people about this video as well. Tell your friends to check out my channel if they're looking for more part-time reselling content. And thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I appreciate you so much. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the week and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!